Hi, I'm John from Silver Sun Shooting Centre and it's been a while since we released a video out so we thought we'd do one basically summing up some of the work we're doing our winter. Obviously our winter league has been going very well which is obviously a practical mini rifle league. But there's also been some few developments for us which I'm quite surprised about and I thought it was worthwhile sharing. Now as most people know we are big Smith & Wesson 1522 fans. Uh, we have 10, 15 guns here we use for club rifles, we use for our experience days and I compete with a pair of them. It's a gun that just worked us perfectly well for, for years and we're very, very pleased with what we've done. But there have been two observations about the gun over the last few years from two different groups of people that have sort of pricked our ears up and made us think, you know what, maybe we should look uh, further afield as well. One was from people who on the competition circuit who never liked the weight of the Smith. They thought it was very light, too light to weight and it wasn't very wieldy enough and didn't feel like a gun to some guys. Now, I never really understood that as a comment. Um, for me, for competition purposes, it just works. It has to work, it has to be accurate, um, and that's what you care about in competition. But um, it's stuck in the back of my mind for a while. There's a few people sort of saying, oh, they want to have a, a shared upper between a 223 and a 22, but on the base, we don't have semi automatic centre fire rifles in the UK. What's the point of that? Anyway, so I sort of poo pooed the idea, and all I did was say, look, Smith wins everything out there. Therefore, it's a gun worth having. The second group of people which we listen to is that we do a lot of shooting experience events here where non-shooters come along and, and try shooting rifles, uh, target rifles. And uh, we have 15 Smith & Wesson guns for use for that. And the comment from everybody there is again, oh, these feel like weight, they feel like toys. Now, that's not so good. These are rifles, these are section one firearms, they're restricted use, and therefore if someone come along to try one, we want them to feel like they're shooting a real gun. <laughs> Even though they are real guns, they may not feel like it. So those two things have grated on my mind for a while. Nothing really great, still shoot the Smith & Wesson and still compete and they still look at the competition circuit, it's still the winningest rifle out there. But um, a year or so ago, I started looking around for other types of guns to look for. And there are now quite a big choice of um, uh, semi-automatic 2.2s in the UK. Um, you've got ones from Chris, from uh, Tipman, um, there's Lantac, uh, there's CMMG, uh, there's now ones from uh, Chapa. So there's four or five now out there. But again, the same thing applies. There's not many competing particularly well high level. There are a few, obviously some good shooters with some good different rifles. But again, the Smith is the most common one. So a little while ago, I bought one. Uh, and actually I bought a Chris, Chris Arms, uh, Defiance. Uh, and I had it in the safe and it's been sat there doing nothing for a while. We shot it a few times, it seemed quite nice, but for me it felt very, very, very heavy. Um, obviously coming from a very lightweight gun, um, so we didn't really pursue any more with it. Uh, and whilst there's no problems with it, we didn't do anything with it, so it sat there for a while. Then I went to SHOT Show this year in 2020, and I went specifically to go and speak to Chris Arms, who I brought out the Vector 22 caliber. Now, uh, I was curious by that because they would be good for our experience days, but also from a left-handed shooter's perspective, which I am, um, I was curious about how the Vector platform might suit very well a left-handed shooter because I knew it was designed by a guy who was a lefty. So I got talking to the guys at Chris and I was pretty impressed. I managed to speak to the gunsmiths there and the guy who designed the gun and they were very complimentary about their own gun, the Defiance, understandably so. And I, would, I sort of poo-pooed it a bit, so, you know, we've been shooting the Smith, works fine, you know, it's a cheaper gun. And they literally said, yeah, have a look, have a proper look. So I came back from SHOT Show, got our gun out of the safe, had a look at it, and I've been shooting it a little while since. And you know what, it's pretty good. Um, that would not sound like I'm, you know, dismissive of it. it. Like I said, I've been very strong on the Smith & Wesson, and the Smith & Wesson is still a fantastic gun, and still arguably the go-to rifle for uh, IPSC mini rifle. Um, but I think the Chris has some legs. Now, so I've done some shooting over winter time, putting it through some fairly grueling uh, conditions. Uh, I shot 2,000 rounds through yesterday, another 2,000 rounds through this morning. Um, and, and it is going very well. We tried some aftermarket bits, some of which don't work. And that comes down to the reason why I think there may be some weight to this in terms as an alternative gun to the Smith & Wesson. Because literally the opportunity to customize a gun is significantly higher than the Smith & Wesson. With the 1522, it looks proprietary. It says it's, it's an AR platform, but it's not. There are bits that don't fit, uh, specifically in terms of how the, the size of the gun works. And also specific customs in terms of forend and handguards and various bits that are, are very custom to the Smith & Wesson, which meant that the ability to you know, laterally think and design new things for the gun is limited, or certainly limited by cost, because some of the things you can buy, very expensive. 
So the Chris we picked, and we picked it for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's all aluminium, all metal product. Um, so it's a solid gun, and from my perspective, felt very heavy. Uh, also, because it is a standard AR platform, everything fits. You can buy your cheap old eBay copy stuff and everything will fit. It might not work, but it all fits. So we had a standard gun, shot that for a while. I decided it's too heavy for me personally. So we had a bit of a play and we've come up with a version as a starting point that we think will work very well. Now, I'm not gonna go through this too much detail because some of these gun bits we put this gun doesn't work. Uh, that's part of testing, but some of it works spectacularly well. And because they're standard AR platform parts, it means you can just bolt them on to your Chris and go ahead. Now, a couple of things I'm gonna change on this, but I'm gonna start competing with this one um, in our own competitions and also on the UK PSA and the NRA circuit. Um, I'll change a few things on this one first of all. But overall, we're going to look at the Chris more longer term in terms for both our experience events, because the weightier heft of the gun um, does lend itself well for the corporate events who are expecting a heavy gun to shoot. And secondly, for the people who are shooting competitively speaking, the weight side of it. Like I said, I, I've got this now how I like my gun to weigh. So all the weight is in the center of the rifle. I've, I've taken, changed the forend, I've changed the stock, the grip, all the stuff that means to do with Chris. But the upper and the lower and the trigger group are all Chris. It's been messed around with the trigger, didn't like it, gone back to standard one, it's actually very good. A few little changes we've done and put in, a couple little bits, etc side charging handle. Now, one of the aspects of IPSC shooting is you do get light strikes from time to time, and also you do get unloaded starts. Now, normally with a T-bar that sits at the back of the gun here, you have to get your hand behind it to action back. Me being left-handed, I'm quite good. I can action forward on the button, but right-handed people have to sit back and literally come back, T-bar back on a thing, or rather back. And if you're running multiple optics, like I sometimes do, or the longer scope, <laughs> you run that room. So this one we put in basically a straight pull. It's a straight pull handle. Use my 223s. So it literally means straight back, which is much, much faster than obviously going for a T-bar. Couldn't do that with the Smith & Wesson because nothing really exists. That's a straight pull bar that we've obviously modified to fit this gun. But it's not significant at work. But the upper and lower are completely all Chris. We testing is back to back with a completely standard gun. See how that plays out. But overall, it's very similar to what you did with the Smith & Wesson. The Smith & Wesson reran a standard upper, stand lower, and changed everything else. With the Chris, more we can keep. And because of the extra weight of the gun, and because of obviously different aspects of it that are more AR style, it means the opportunities to play around with more of it are quite high. So I'm going to run both side by side for a while, uh, compare the two of them, um, get them working so I'm happy with it. But it may well be we'll do some more things with the Chris um, and go for the Ford. We'll also start look at the vector when it comes out. I still think there's legs on that for a practical shooting gun. Again, for a left-hander, less so for a right-hander potentially. But it's something worth looking at. And certainly my conversations with Chris as a manufacturer over in the States, and Shield, who are their UK uh, importer in the UK, have been very encouraging about wanting to develop the gun and develop the sport in terms of practical shooting, which, bottom line, that's what I want to try and do. Anyway, so I thought we should do that if I can. We've done quite a lot of filming in winter, um, which we're going to release in the next few weeks, including some target systems. Uh, we also have our new uh, Hawk Optics uh, Practical uh, Mini Rifle Championship, which starts in April. We'll start doing some video photos there as well. Um, I will shoot that with this um, and some more stuff going on. So happy shooting. Uh, please do subscribe, hit the bell, the various bits coming on. There's more coming through. Um, otherwise, I'll see you on the circuit. Okay, cheers.